There's so many goddamn pillows on this thing. All right, welcome back. Did you miss us? We missed you. This is a show that we're doing occasionally based off of our podcast, Live on Tape Delay, which you can find anywhere that you can get a podcast. Even Spotify. Even Spotify. Awesome. We're going to talk about records, we're going to talk about beer, but we might also talk about sports or... Music not related to vinyl. Um, we may talk about anything. We may talk cryptocurrency. But in this episode, just, uh, you know, to get your lips wet, we're going to give you an old school kind of record and beer pairing that, that you could have at home. And notice we are festive. It is the holidays. I've got my, my Bill's Christmas sweater on, and I have a Santa cat riding a cat reindeer with my meowy Christmas, uh, whatever you call this, meanie, I guess. It's supposed to light up, but something's broken and I haven't fixed it yet, but. All right, let's dive in. Uh, what are we drinking? We had to, try to go, I don't have any Christmas records, which I used to, but I don't currently. So what can we give you beer and music wise that would kind of fit in with the Christmas spirit? Well, beer wise, we got that covered. That, that was an easy one. Uh, St. Arnold kind of did the work for us with their cut with bread pudding. It's their yearly release, the Christmas sale they do, but instead of, this is their limited release version of it, that they added cinnamon during the boil and vanilla while it was fermenting to give it a almost bread pudding smell, taste to it. Um, I'm a little disappointed because they're not releasing Sailing Santa as a result of releasing this one this year. But they did, you know, you can't always just take half of a Alyssa IPA and half of a Christmas sale and make your own Sailing Santa. Sailing? Sailing. Okay. Am I saying it weird? I, I, for, I was picturing, like, saline. <laughs> and I was like, D- I do not want to drink that. It just does not sound good, even with Santa. No. All right, that's that good. I've never had bread pudding before, so this is going to be a rough comparison. <laughs> um, hmm. I do get... Oh, uh, no, nope. I was going to say I get some banana, but it's not banana pudding. So, <laughs> once again, I've got a great nose for beer. I'm just going gonna, gonna to drink it. I feel like it'd be a little better if it was a little closer to room temperature. Hmm. I don't know why. Some beers do that. Some beers get a little bit, the flavor mellows out a little bit as they warm up some. I just feel like, a, I don't know, I just think of bread pudding. I mean, I've never had it, but I feel like <laughs> it would maybe be warm or could be served warm. Yeah. And I think with some of the the umbop and cardamom that's in here, is that what you said? Cinnamon, <laughs> Cinnabon and... Uh, Cinnabon and... Uh, Cinnabon and vanilla bean. <laughs> yeah. Would maybe be a little better. What's the ABV on this? Seven and a half. There it is. Okay, that's not right bad. Right on the bottle. Thank you, St. Arnold. Just always put the information on the bottle. It makes my life so much easier. Winter beers, I do like a higher alcohol content. Yeah. Usually. Maybe because you're usually dealing with family situations that, you know, that could be joyous for celebration <laughs> beer, mm-hmm. or you need to get away beer. Yep. Or it's also going to be cold and you need something to get rid of the cold feeling, so alcohol can hide it, I guess. There you go. Or help you pass out so you don't feel it anymore either. Either way. Saw so these guys open for Danzig in 2003-2004. Uh, I'd never heard of them. Um, dude was wearing like a Megadeth Rust in Peace shirt. They looked like kids. I was like, cool, they were kind of playing thrash. Thought it was pretty interesting. Band turned out to be Trivium. Uh, got into their first couple albums and then just kind of lost touch with them. They were kind of almost in that whole mall scene a little bit, the Hot Topic thing. And, um, yeah, just kind of lost touch with them. Uh, had occurred a couple songs recently that were okay, but, um, had found out they got a new drummer, Alex Bent, and watched... I've said this on the podcast, if you want people to be more interested in your album, document the recording process. Because... Trivium did that with their latest record. 
Mastodon did that, and I didn't really love the Mastodon record at first listen until I kind of saw what went into it and what they had, you know, what they put into it and what it was kind of about. Um, that made me like the record a lot more. And so, yeah, same with this. And now they're doing daily tour vlogs as well. And our friends uh, from Too Late the Hero do some backing vocals on the track, which is awesome. Check out Jack Stoltz's vlog. Stoltz's? Stoltz's? Soul's eyes. Either way, cool dude. Uh, link below to his awesome vlog. Check it out. Um, record is solid. Just a catchy metal record. Like uh, there's some screaming, there's some clean singing. Production is fantastic. The drumming is phenomenal. That's what sells the record for me. Isn't he only like 22 or something like 24 that? 24 maybe. 24. Yeah, just oh, what a great drummer. Just so so good like this fits like this is the missing piece that this band needed I think to, to really push the boundaries a little bit going forward because I think that's what was happening is they had kind of, kind of gotten into this formula and was just you know working for them but I kind of lost interest so the fact that they kind of were able to break out a little bit more and kind of push you know not push the boundaries of metal but push their boundaries and you know uh, on some of the songs fantastic um, recommend checking out Betrayer if you want a, a little taste of the album that's one of my favorite uh, the title tracks in the sentence which there is a guitar world playthrough uh, of that song if you happen to be a guitarist and want to check that out it's pretty cool and um, sever the hand is another good one it's it's a really solid record uh, it was my number three pick for 2017 uh, linked below that episode of the podcast and um, yeah I think I'll be I think it's something I'll be able to revisit for a while and uh, I do feel like it's a cold weather album it's got that you know Trivium always kind of has that cold weather sound to me so that's that's what I'm going for so check that out so the one I went with is uh, I'd heard some songs from this band and uh, they put out an album this year um, but we were at Wax taps one weekend and looking through the plentiful, <laughs> plentiful record selection at Wax Taps with a beer in my hand, um, and I came across this Converge record, unloved and weeded out. There we go, um, because it's not a um, an actual like album album. It's a collection of previously recorded tracks and uh, demo songs they recorded. Uh, in their parents' basement before they actually got onto a record label. That's crazy. So it's, you know, the first half is just previously released songs that they had done, and then the second half is all of those demo tracks. Um, and this came out in 2003, um, so it was kind of in between a couple albums, um, but it's, hmm. it's a good look into kind of where they really started sound-wise and kind of where they started growing. And obviously, you know, from 2003, there's nothing like what the album they put out this year, which was also a great album. Um, but this is a, uh, it was a fun find that I didn't expect to see because I had honestly not heard that it existed. I had no idea it existed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I need to go back and, I mean, because I love, like, um, their new record, which I own on vinyl. It's weird. <laughs> I was going through my record collection trying to pick out what ones I wanted to talk about. And the records that I own on vinyl are the ones I haven't listened to the most. Because I said, hey, I want to wait and get the vinyl and really, you know, I want to listen to it that way. So I just haven't. And then other records that I only listen to have on Spotify, I've listened to thousands of times. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of weird. Um, but the Converge records, I saw them on the No Heroes tour for the first time. Um, and so I have every record from then but I have not really gotten in too much to their earlier uh, discography, and I need to. Oh, BT Dubs, sorry. <laughs> it is, oh, wow. I, I, I didn't show you the record, uh, but it is uh, double vinyl, double LP, which is very cool. Uh, really cool, just kind of minimalist artwork. Um, I like it, I think it's pretty cool. It's standard black, nothing, uh, nothing right home about. Uh, and then the album cover is very simple, just some kind of little like flame triangle thing. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. The artwork on this one is definitely along <laughs> the lines of like the Jane Doe and other yeah. albums they were releasing in the early two thousands. Um, so it definitely stood out. Uh, it is actually the uh, colored vinyl. It's 
Ooh, nice it looks little. green. I like it. Look at that. Bright green going on. Mm. Um, but it's Christmassy. Yeah, Christmassy. There you go. They're from the Northeast, so it's cold S there. Yep. Snow, Christmas, yep. Santa, yep. Satan. <laughs> exactly. Everything. So we kind of got... That, that's the most Christmas album you're going to get from me. I mean, you can't ask for a Christmas album and this Christmas attire. You can't. You can't. All right, that's it. Hope you had a great Christmas, or we'll have this... This won't be up before next Christmas. <laughs> Maybe it will be. Thanks for hanging out, and as always, check out the podcast, LTDpodcast.com, live on tape delay. Peace.